Ben here. Yes. Do you recognize this song? I recognize this song. I think everybody recognizes this song. Who recognizes this song? Okay, right. you know you know the music, but we also have lyrics. We have new lyrics. And we're all gonna sing along, right? right. So I will give a sign and then we're gonna sing. Here we go. It's just too much code. And it don't look good. Who are you gonna call? Birthday Busters! That sounded good. Oh, thank you. That sounded good. So the first applause is in, all we can go. Yes. Hi, and welcome to our talk. My name is Reinier Zwitserloot. Uh, I work at a small company in Delft, Zorg op Orde, and we help general practitioners for the Belgians and Dutch and Orleans Huisartsen, and we uh, help them give better care and earn a little extra in the process. And my name is Rolf Spelker. I work at Topdesk. Uh, we make service management software, and we have uh, offices uh, with developers in Delft, in Kaiserslautern, and in Budapest. We also make one more thing. Project no. Lombok. Project Lombok. Who of you uses Project Lombok? Oh, that's oh, quite nice. a lot. That's quite a lot. So for those of you who don't know what it is, uh, it's a plugin for your IDE and your compiler to get rid of all the Java boilerplate. And that's it. And you know, Renier, we're celebrating. We're, we're celebrating? Yes, we're celebrating. What, what are we celebrating today? So 10 years ago at DevOx, we had our first public presentation of Project Lombok. I think it might have been room three. Uh, I don't know that, but at least 10 years of Project Lombok. 10 years? 10 years. Ten, 10 years of boilerplate busting. Yes. Ten years. I think I need to, I don't know, like sit down, like hearth, and then like cigars and whiskey. That feels appropriate. Yeah, yeah. M maybe tonight uh, after the movie or something, uh, let's go to a bar and discuss that. But now I, I have more, uh, I'm in the mood to look back. Okay. Yeah, I think we should look back at our biggest mistakes. Okay. Um, speaking of, why was there a painting, uh, The Great Wave by Hokusai? Why was that up there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that we should be humble in the presence of some masterpieces. Oh, I see. So would you like these masterpieces to maybe inspire us and give us some lessons for the next 10 years? Yeah, something that everyone could learn from. Okay. Well, let me think. I think I have a really... Good painting for you. You have a painting for me? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, okay. Ready? How, how is that? Is that inspiring oh, for you? <laughs> inspiring. Uh, this is how I feel if I look at the Lombok issue tracker. Oh, oh, is it? Yeah, sometimes it is. Sometimes uh, it is. Let, well, let's have a look. Oh, dear. Yes. Look at that. 590 open issues? 590 open oh, issues. Oh, dear. And, and three of those in the last day. Oh, dear. Okay. Yeah, that's quite a lot. And that's why I feel connected to the painting, The Scream by Edward Munch. So we get so many pull requests, uh, bug reports, uh, questions on our forum, and the list just keeps growing and growing. And that's, that's a problem with that, because the longer we wait, the, the more often people ask like, hey, what's happening? What is the status of this open issue? When are you going to address this? Now also, the more issues we have, the harder it is for people to, to, to find if we already have an issue for a bug they encounter. So we got a lot of duplicates. Well, it's how did this happen? Because yeah. I remember 10 years ago, we had our first book report. Yeah. It was adorable. Because nice. it meant we had more than our us two as users. So I think we dropped everything we were doing and we ran home and we fixed it in two hours and we were really excited and happy about it. Yes. And now... We, we open our GitHub repository and we see 590 bucks and we just go, ah, what's going on? What, what happened? Did we, did we learn anything in those 10 years and 590 open book reports? Uh, yeah, we, we kind of have a solution now. So, okay. maybe, yeah. So, every Tuesday night, we work on Project Lombok and we spend, uh, uh, well, we, we want to spend it on, on, on coding, on adding new features. But, but first, we need to deal with the open issues. So we close as many open issues as we can. And also, these, these Tuesday nights were not sufficient. We still, still, the number kept growing and growing. So since the beginning of this year, we have a new policy. Clean your backlog. Log. Do whatever it takes to, to, to get rid of as many issues as possible. So at least we are going to either close them or categorize them. 
But that kind of sounds like you want us to just spend all, all the time we have for Project Lombok solely on reproducing bugs, closing bug reports, and never spend any time adding new features. That doesn't sound like a good idea, though. No, don't. that's why we need to learn how to become fast and ruthless. Just what what does for, that mean? So, for instance, if an issue is not immediately clear, if there is no reproduction, reproduction recipe, we ask the, 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 the reporter to provide us with a small program that demonstrates the bug. And then we, we, we uh, label the issue and we put it on parked. And, and often we type in the, in, the, in the text that if we don't get a response within two weeks, we're just going to close the issue. Well, I like our users and this sounds a little too ruthless to me. I want to be nice. Like if somebody sends us a bug report and it's fairly clear something is wrong, but I don't yep. like include in detail exactly and precisely how to reproduce it. I don't want to fob them off with put it on park and say, if you don't explain further, we're just going to close this thing. So Renier, I have three options for you. Okay. You Let's have to pick one. Okay. First option, have over a thousand open bug reports. Mm, pass. Option B, we spend all our time chasing these weird bugs. No thanks. Option C, be ruthless. Mm. Close them. I kind of see where you're coming from. I guess we have to be a little selective if we want to get rid of 590 bug reports. Yeah, so even if we know that there is a bug, we need to close it. We have to trust our users to give us the reproduction recipes. So there's someone, maybe someone else can give us a, a reproduction recipe. But the lesson is to make sure you have time to add value, clean your backlog. No matter what, do whatever it takes. Be as ruthless as you have to be. You cannot let the issue stack up on you. I guess otherwise we kind of Yeah, the alternative is go you, insane. you go insane, yes. Okay. Um, so was this painting sufficiently inspiring for you? For me it was, but I have a painting for you oh, now. Oh, okay. Let's or have a look. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I guess, well, your story, your story kind of, kind of inspires me, I think. And this, this painting, so I, when, way, way, way back, right, that very first book report I, I talked about before, we, we, we raced home and we fixed it, but what did we do then? We fixed the bug and we reported in the bug tracker, we fixed it. And hey, GitHub is nice. And if I document in my commit log that I fixed some bug with a bug ID, then it just automatically marks it as fixed. And we thought that, that that's good enough, right? So we actually asked the bug reporter, hey, could you do us a favor and check if what we did actually helps you out? And we left it there. And I don't think they ever actually did, though we were so excited about our first bug report, I don't think we even noticed. But let's think about it for a second, right? What are we asking? We are asking them to check out the entire GitHub repo. Then, you know, hopefully they have all the tools on their system to run it and compile it. And then they take the build, integrate it into all their tools, and then run their usual stuff, and then report back to us if we actually fix the bug based on their compilation of our Git clone, right? It's a little complicated. So about, I think, five years, uh, five, f about five years ago, we did what many projects do, and we now have something we call an edge release. Many other projects call this a nightly release. This is the notion that we will actually push and, and build for you a Lombok version, which is just the latest stuff, though, you know, we're not really going to say that it's stable because, you know, we might have broken more than we fixed with a, with a bug fix. And that helped, and we got more feedback on our bugs but it still wasn't enough. So we really, really want to make it easy. And maybe in the spirit of this painting, Mobius Strip by MC Escher, it's actually a woodcut, I think. Um, we're now doing this. So most, almost everybody uses some build system that integrates with Maven Central. So we have our own repository these days. So if you, have your, uh, if you add this repository to your build system, you can just up upgrade your Lombok version to Edge and test your stuff, right? That's about as easy as we can make it. Yeah, so the mistake we made was we made it too hard for our users to test our work in progress. Exactly. So what's the, what's the lesson then? Well, so the, the, the problem by not doing that, right, is if, so, okay. So let's go back to version releases, right? Because there's one alternative we could do. We could just release lots and lots of versions, right? Mm -hmm. Be very edgy and every week we just have a new longer version. 
That's trickier than it sounds like, because when we fix a bug, uh, well, let, let me put it differently. When we reproduce a bug, we're not 100% sure we actually caught the essence of the bug report, right? We think so. Uh, and if somebody actually sends us a complete reproduction report, we can be fairly sure of it, but you're never quite sure. And you often get like three or four bug reports that all sound like it's the same issue. So you think you fix them, but feedback is a good idea, right? So if we push a new release, then, and we didn't actually fix it, we just get more bug reports and hey, that 590 number still scares me, so I want it to be as low as it can be, right? A second problem is sometimes we, we fix a bug and we think, well, this has an impact on other code in Lombok, right? So hopefully our tests will catch it. And even if not, you know, we make sure that we think we did a good job. But it's still possible that fixing one thing or adding a feature adds more bugs or bugs in places where you weren't expecting them. So just releasing new versions all the time isn't a good idea either, which is why asking for feedback is such a good idea. Otherwise, you sort of keep in this loopy treadmill of, okay, I get a book. You get like, you really don't want 10 book reports for the same issue or, or even more, right? You want to keep that down or you just keep answering. We already fixed it. Please check out the edge release. Which version are you using? And it drives you insane. So that's why um, uh, feedback on book reports uh, or book fixes rather is very, very important. And so the lesson is to make it easy for your users to give early feedback, release snapshots, and make it as easy as possible. Cool. Yes. How about this painting? Oh, I love it. I love this painting. Uh, so in the center, that looks like a party, a lot of people. You know, it reminds me a bit of uh, our GitHub users. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's I, about I as, think as, it's as our many GitHub stars users. as we have, sure. Oh. We have a pull request. Oh, cool. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, it's great. It's okay. an addition to, uh, to the two-string feature in Lombok. We already have a two-string, and this adds a, a couple of new features. Oh, good. Did, he, did they add the documentation? Yeah, it was perfect. So there was a documentation. There were implementations for really? Java C, for Eclipse. They had uh, the test. He had a test. Tests? Yeah, nice. Test. So and you know, you know what's the best part? Tell me. They even use our coding style, like the, the proper indentation, everything. I Naming. think he found the perfect pull request. It was the perfect Amazing. pull request. Amazing. Tell me yes. more. What does it do? Well, it gives you more control on how uh, Lombox generated two-string method is, uh, yeah, okay. is rendered. Uh, so here on let, the let, let's yeah, see yeah, it. Let's see it. So on the top of the slide, you can see an example of the result of the two-string invocation, right? Okay. And uh, so what he said is, uh, instead of having uh, just the, the, the word painting, as would be the default in, in, in Lombok, uh, I want to see the, the fully qualified name. Okay. So that's why it says com.topdesk.r.painting. Uh, okay. And All then right, right. Uh, uh, as a prefix, then we start with the curly braces. Um, sure, yeah. I guess that's fine. And the suffix is square brackets. Mm, that, isn't it a bit weird to have a different closing kind of bracket than the... Uh, let's bracket. call it artistic license. Oh, sure, yeah? why not? It's, if you want it, you get it. Okay. Yeah, but not by default. You have to configure it. All right. you, uh, All right. you, I see, by I default, see. you get the, parent the, the parenthesis, right? Uh, and then uh, the separator between the field name and its value is going to be a colon and a space. Uh, okay. And the separator between two fields is going to be the pipe symbol. Okay, so then you get kind of what we have up there. Yeah, yes. Fun. Uh, Let's also add the stuff that we have already in the... In the All right. Yeah. So these, these are the, 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 the default stuff you have. So the more the merrier, right? This in this this com the top this art painting thing, yeah. I can see how people want to include the package name there, but I saw this trick in login frameworks where you shorten the package bits. Yeah. He, he, in the pull request, he also said, possibly instead of a Boolean, we want to have an enum so, so people can actually like configure style? what style. Yeah. And that's like, it would look like this, like CTA and then I, yes. I pick a style. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. And well, while we're at it, why don't we add a couple more things? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that, that, uh, that I like is the name of the painter here is, is, is obviously a string, right? Yeah. So, so let's put some uh, quotes around it. And by the way, everything we're going to name now are real, they're not pull requests, but they're real feature requests. Yeah. So let's add, let's add some quotes around the... Yeah. Yeah. I don't like doing this, but if we make it configurable, nobody can complain, right? So we'll make it configurable. There yes. you go. Uh, and uh, it says that it, it has, it's very specific on when the painting was created here. Mm -hmm. But I, I know, in fact, that it's, a, it's an estimate. So it, it should be somewhere around the year 1500. We can, we can take some inspiration from debug frameworks where you can 
configure custom renderers for values. Yeah. So why don't we add custom renderers? Great to idea. Add some values? Great idea. That that's that that gets requested a lot. Um, and also, I looked at the list of exhibitions. It doesn't even fit on the screen. No. Maybe. So uh, maybe for performance reasons or for for brevity, let's let's if if a collection contains a lot of entries, just print the the, the number of entries instead of the full list. Okay, but I'm a programmer, so I can't really work with a lot. What what does a lot mean? Uh, let the user decide. Right, because then we don't have to pick a number. I, yeah, I like it. There yeah. we go. How's that? Yeah, that's uh, that, that's cool. That's cool. Any anything else? Yeah. Any other features um, about the stuff? So uh, let's skip the empty the empty fields and the fields that contain null from the toString and at all. Hmm, that's a stupid idea. A stupid that's idea. We get that request. dumbest idea I ever heard. It's a good idea. We can't add that to our feature. Why not? Because our slide is full. Ah, that's a good reason. That's a very good reason. I think now, yeah. I think that the problem is if we add too many features, then it gets hard. It gets hard, right? If we shouldn't decide which features we add to toString based on the first come, first serve, whatever sounds cool at the time, kind of kind of way to go about it, right? And yeah. um, a feature request is just somebody thinking, I would love this stuff. But they're not guarding the learning curve either. Can, can, can you go back to the to the painting? Yeah, yeah. Because I think now why you you picked this painting for me. Yeah, feels. Yeah, yeah. Because I know relevant. I know how to read art, especially from that era. So you you have to read it from left to right. Oh, I see. So on the left hand side, everything is nice, clean, organized. It's it's like you're in paradise. Mm -hmm. And on the right hand side, it's all chaos. It's like hell. So you're you're telling me when when your project starts out it, it it's heaven and then GitHub users show up and then all hell breaks loose. Yes, that's I what see. I'm saying. All yes. right. Yeah. So we had to reject this pull request. And by the way, this is the Garden of Earthy Delights by your own English boss for the few who don't recognize the painting. Yeah. So we had to reject this pull request because creating a pull request is is like a one-off. You spend some time on it. You create a test, and then you create a documentation, and then you're done. But we have to maintain this feature indefinitely. So it's a burden on us maintainers to make sure that whatever is added to our code base, that we own it. And then the other thing is that uh, 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 we need to consider interaction with other existing features, like uh, do you want to invoke the getter in the toString, or do you want to uh, access the field directly, or interactions with future expansion that we have either planned or came, come up with. So we need to take it into account when we add new features. And also, the more features we add, the steeper the learning curve for our users. We don't want to, we don't, so uh, people are already complaining about all these frameworks that have their own annotations and that they can't recognize the Java program from the annotations anymore. So we need to restrict the number of features we're adding. And, mm. and although, although all these ideas in themselves sound like a good idea, together it's like the, I can't choose between uh, uh, skipping null values or adding quotes. But I think for both, there's, you can make a case. But that goes for all 20 or 30 other features as well. And we don't want to add them all. So that's why we basically say, well, if you your two string, you you for, especially for two string, two string is meant as a like a debugging tool. Yeah. Or, or it's 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 Shouldn't not be too a, complicated. It's not a part of your API. So so why would you really care on the exact formatting of your two string? So maybe we should keep it simple. Keep it simple. And if you need something special because it's part of your API, then you hand code it. Then it's no longer boilerplate. Yeah, that's a good point. So what kind of lesson are we drawing from this painting? Yeah, the lesson is to prevent instabilities and a maintenance burden, add features carefully. Hmm. I think it's a good lesson. So I'm getting in the mood. So I, I really like this painting. I love this painting. I'm not sure. I'm, maybe as a programmer, I love putting things in boxes, I guess. That brings me back, right? In 2009, when we first released Lombok, we released it with data and everything that falls under that. So that's getter, setter, two string. Uh, I'm missing one. Uh, equals hash code. Yeah. Right? 
And then about a year passed and we had a great idea. Who here has heard of the term prefer composition over inheritance? Yeah. Look at that. Over oh. half the audience. Yeah. So just to explain it quickly, let's say you have a class and you need it to be a bit list-like. It has uh, some list properties. So you could say, oh, fine, I'll extend area list. And then you get everything that area list has and you're done. But the problem is it's not very flexible. You get literally everything area list has, including, for example, ensure capacity, which is a bit of a weird one to throw into your API. You can't really opt out of it. So what composition over inheritance says is if you want to keep the flexibility, it will be better if you have a field of type list, probably equals new area list, and then you can be selective. You can add whatever methods you feel like you should add, and all those methods will be one-liners because all you have to do is call the same method on your private field. And if you want to implement list, you can, and if you don't want to, then you don't have to, right? Nice and flexible. But especially if you are, if you need to copy, let's say, 20 methods, that is a lot of lines of code still, right? And they're all real simple, and that really feels like boilerplate, right? So this is why we thought of a way to solve the problem. And we added our first new official feature, and it was called at delegate. And the idea behind delegate was just as I explained, but we needed to be a little bit fanciful with the syntax because it was relatively hard to add this feature, uh, but we found a way. But we did have a problem because we thought, okay, so we added it, now it works, but we think we can do better, but we're not entirely sure yet. So we debated not releasing it at all, but we thought, well, you know, it's a really cool feature. Uh, composition over inheritance is, a, is very, fairly common boilerplate and should probably be more common. So I really want to help our users. So we decided to announce, okay, guys, we're releasing this feature, but can anybody help us think of a better way to do it? And if we find a better way to do it, we will actually implement it and then we'll update delegate so we post this on our mailing list and on our forum and we have a lot of users and they don't all read our mailing list and they don't all read our forum so we know that delegate isn't quite as well supported as data two string etc and our most avid users also know but all our other users they don't know now imagine we're nine years down the road and we still haven't really figured out how to do a better job at this and now imagine today i just change how delegate works. I think that 590 is going to go to over 1,000 in a week, right? You, once a feature's out there for that long, or even if it's out in an official release for a little while, you really don't want to change it, right? You don't want to break backwards compatibility because users will understandably get very annoyed when you do that. So we really need to communicate better to our users, hey, um, this feature is a little bit tricky. Maybe we'll fix it someday, right? Because I do not want to release an at delegate to in order to get around this. That's a cop-out that nobody wants. So we addressed it. And unfortunately for Delegate, we didn't learn this lesson, but we fixed it afterwards. We have this concept called experimental features now. Now, we have a separate section on our, in our documentation that, that explains these features. And for every experimental feature, we explain why we consider it experimental, which can be varied reasons. We don't like the implementation. We can't really agree that we can support it because uh, you know something. we have a couple of features where we really dive into a couple of hacks, uh, or we're not even sure if it's a good idea for Lombok to have the feature in the first place. Uh, that would be one halfway solution to the two-string dilemma is that we would add it as, a, as an experimental feature. And in order to be real clear to all our users that something is experimental, we created a package. So uh, Delegate, we moved it afterwards, is now in the Lombok.experimental package. So we, we didn't add an add beta annotation. We did not add an add beta annotation. No, no we have a, an, an add beta package, let's call it that way. <laughs> Um, so now we have put our features in little boxes. We have our stable features, the ones that we will prioritize for bug reports, the ones where we're not going to change it unless we have an extremely good reason. And we have our experimental, which gives us some flexibility, right? We don't need to think that long and hard, and we don't need to debate, hey, if we add this feature, you know, we already support it and, and are the maintainers of Project Lombok for 10 years, right? So that's the kind of scale we're talking about. If we release a feature, we're on the hook to maintain it for 10 plus years. It makes it easier for us to be a little more cavalier about new features and, and, and get more feedback as well. So that's the experimental features API. Uh, and that's, I think, why I really like this painting, which is a Victory Boogie Woogie by Piet Mondrian. Yeah, I think that the whole painting is an experiment. <laughs> well, that was a bit of an experimental audio. Yeah, but... nice. <laughs> <laughs> So the lesson is to have a stable base, but still leave room for innovation, mark new features as experimental. Ah, the Mona Lisa. 
by Leonardo da Vinci. Perhaps the greatest masterpiece of all. Mm. Certainly most expensive. Do you think that Leonardo da Vinci knew that he was painting what is generally considered as the best painting of all time when he painted it? Um, I don't think so. And I, I, I definitely don't want to compare Project Lombok with Mona Lisa. And I think that... Why not? Ever, it's our masterpiece. I think that in a few hundred years, nobody's going to remember Project Lombok. But there are cer certain things that, that I know uh, that, is, that we didn't expect it to become this big. And that was a challenge. So uh, uh, we started out, created some tool, and then we went to DevOps and told people about it. And uh, of course, we, we have a website. Um, uh, but if you see, we, since last year, we had over a million visitors on our website. So uh, I'm a coder. I don't know how to maintain websites. When we started off Forza Glomog, we thought, hey, this is cool. You can actually change ASTs. Let's make a little tool. We built it in a week in a, for fun. Yeah. And now it turns out that maintaining an open source project is a lot of work. It's, it's, it's well, what you heard. Uh, we spend most of Tuesdays on, uh, on reproducing bugs. And, uh, and every change we make, if you have this many users, every change you make, uh, no matter how small, is going to upset at least one of your users. I remember, we, we recently uh, changed, improved the error message in, 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 the, in, the, in the null pointer exception if you use at non null. We, we had a slide, like a few letters were changed. Like and then the, some, the, the and people get start, message on the exception we throw. Right? Yeah. yeah, and then people start complaining that the unit tests were broken. So we're all like, you unit test the messages of your exceptions? Yeah, and people do that. Okay. If you have so many users, there will always be one that does yep. something like this. And I'm saying, I'm not, I don't want to judge him. Uh, I think he was very, uh, he had a lot of tests. He had like 127% test coverage. <laughs> nice. Yes. That's so, a new goal for all of you. Yeah. So... Yeah, you, you cannot, we cannot change anything. And I'm not just talking about the code. I'm also talking about uh, if we update our website with this many visitors, uh, our website has to be up and running like 24-7. Well, we have much. users all over the world. Uh, and that's, that's not our thing. Like, like we don't have a, a uh, redundant web server. We have, we, we, we have a web server. Well, can we just get our DevOps team to fix the problem? Ah, our DevOps team. Yeah, great. Yes. Yeah. So, so no. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so th that's actually where we, where we fail. Uh, we, we say, well, uh, if you we have an update on our website or if we need to up upgrade uh, the, the web server or, the, or the, the hosting location or anything, the website is going to go down for a few minutes. And that's a deliberate choice we made. It's it's not something that we, that we're proud of, but it's not like it's like that's not our thing. Uh, so if you have this many users, you, you have to learn stuff and you have to make some tough decisions. But what what kind of lesson can we draw from this? Yeah. So this lesson is a bit vague. I I cannot tell the people like, hey, oh, I have the solution. Do this. Get a DevOps team when you start yeah, a yeah, source yeah. project. So yeah. so. My lesson is going to be to prevent nasty surprises, prepare for success. And I don't know how you do that, but at least mentally be aware that if you create something that, that, that it might become successful and then that the thing that you're doing, that the thing why you started it, is not the thing that you're going to spend time on later. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a solution. But I think that lesson also echoes backwards. Like an experimental package is preparing for success because... Once a project is famous, you can't change existing features anymore. Yes. Not without a lot of complaint. Um, but I'm a little bit inspired by this idea. So I have a painting as inspiration for another lesson. Um, because one of, the things that, one of the things that happens when you have a successful project is you get contributors, which sounds great. Right? You get pull requests, and these can come in the form of bug fixes or... Feature, usually there for new features. Uh, we even got a pull request a couple of times to improve performance. We absolutely love those, those kind of pull requests, right? Or the, or the most interesting offer of, for contribution of all, which is where they ask us, hey, I would like to help. What should I do? Now, that sounds great, right? But that is a harder question to answer than, than, than you might imagine. Because at the end of the day, we are the maintainers of Project Lombok. 
right? We can't ask somebody who sends in a pull request to be a maintainer, right? I don't think it's going to work out if I demand that together with the pull request, they send me like a fax with a contract stipulating that they will be around to support the feature for 10 years. Otherwise, we will not accept the pull request. That doesn't really work that way. So for all you maintainers in the audience, make no mistake. When you get a pull request and you press that merge button, that pull request is a baby and you are adopting it. Right? You're on the hook for the maintenance of that pull request. So you better understand what it is because if a bug shows up, they're going to look at us and say, hey, I was relying on this feature and it doesn't work anymore. And now it doesn't work. And then we need to fix it. Um, I mean, sure, it happens that somebody who sent the pull request is still around to help you out, but not always. And you can't rely on this. Um, now, that, so that's one of our responsibilities. But these responsibilities go even further. I think two years in, we got contacted by the Eclipse team because they were using Project Lombok in one of the many things that Eclipse has. And they asked us, so we noticed that uh, Project Lombok has MRT license. That's great. It's totally compatible with the Eclipse public license. But can you vouch for it? Vouch for it? Vouch for it. And I'm like, well, I don't, what does that mean? And they said, well, we checked out your commit logs. And you two are the only two that have commits in the repo. There are other people, right? That's what pull requests do. Can you vouch for them? Vouch for them? Vouch us. Well, what do you mean? So they were talking about legally, right? It, it is uh, Project Lombok. Is all the coding Project Lombok truly MIT licensed open source? Can we vouch for the fact that the source they contributed also fits the license? Ah, it's about intellectual property. It's about intellectual property. Ah, and you're a lawyer. Uh, well, I mean, I am a programmer. I'm not somebody who wants to run a website with a million users, and I'm certainly not somebody who wants to be in a lawyer's office all day. Okay. And yet, that is part of the job. And that, Well, how did we solve that problem? I don't remember. Well, if it's about solving problems, I like to just look at how other people can solve it. That, that's good. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a, that's a bonus lesson. It's better, a bonus lesson. better, well stolen than poorly yeah. implemented, I guess. So uh, I uh, I looked at uh, other popular uh, Java open source projects. Grava. Who of you use Grava? Yeah. So uh, uh, I looked how they did it. And then I contacted the lead maintainer and I, I asked him two questions. I asked, I asked them, does it work? And can we copy it? So, so did, did it work? Yes. Can, can we copy it? Yes. What, what, what is it? So in the root of their, of their Git repo, they have an author's file. And that includes an explicit statement acknowledging the open source nature of the, pro of the project as well as a promise that all named authors, that they, that they own the rights to the code that they are contributing. And uh, in their first pull request, we asked them just to add their name to the list. And that's good enough for Guava. Yeah, if, yeah and if it's and good Google's enough for them. Lawyers. Yep. Well, that's good enough for me. Yes. Now, we added this two years in, but if you start a new open source project, I would just add it from day one. Nice and easy. Now, speaking of names and authors, what is that painting called? Who knows? Anyone? Nightwatch. The Nightwatch? Yes, the, the Nightwatch. Nightwatch. No. No? No, this is the shooting company of Frans Banningkok and Willem van Ruitenburg, which is the English translation of the real name of this painting. But that's a bit of a mouthful, and fair enough. Everybody calls it the Nightwatch. Which brings us to Project Lombok. How do we introduce Project Lombok? Is it the hacking company of... Rolf Spilker and Reinhard Zutzeloot? Is it Project Lombok by Rolf Spilker, Reinhard Zutzeloot, a bunch of other contributors? Should we list them all out? Can we set a limit on that list? Right? That's 20. a little complicated. But now we can just introduce Project Lombok because Project Lombok is by the Project Lombok authors as defined by the author's file. Right? Solves that problem. If somebody asks who wrote it, well, it's in a Git repo. Um, right. Now, I did talk about what do you do when somebody asks you, hey, I want to contribute, what do you need help with? And that is a really tricky question to answer. Because we are really familiar with the Project Lombok source base, right? We, we know all the nooks and crannies. We know where it tends to go wrong. We know everything you need to do in order to implement new features, et cetera, et cetera. So when somebody asks for if they would like to help, they, it's unlikely that they are as familiar with the source base as we are. 
So it really shouldn't throw features at them. Like, could you add this feature, fix this bug where you need lots of knowledge? And as we covered about um, the maintenance burden, it's a bad idea to give, uh, to give somebody who asks, hey, can I help you out, to give them something which has a lot of maintenance burden for us. Because then if we don't quite like how they did it, well, we're on the hook for maintaining it, right? So that's not a good idea either. You're really looking for features that, or bugs that fixing them, you do not need to know everything about Project Lombok. And once, it's, once the feature is delivered or the bug is fixed, that it, it's just done. And it's, even if that uh, contributor falls off the face of the earth afterwards, that that's not a big problem for us. Do you have an example? Yeah. And you need to get a little creative, mm -hmm. but uh, we have stickers. Stickers. Right? Like we these. Do. Like these, right? And there's a logo on that. Yes. Hey, we are programmers, web server uh, owners, lawyers, but we are not graphic designers. Mm. That is a contribution. And that's the perfect contribution because, hey, all the maintenance burden is really low. From time to time, we order new stickers. That's easy. And uh, you don't need to know anything about the Project Lombok source code in order to draw a sticker for us. All right? So that's perfection. And as an example of what would be a really bad idea, Lombok is built with Ant. I'm pretty sure Lombok is by miles the most complicated build in all the Java, Java projects that are pretty much in existence. That's because we use four different compilers targeting three different versions. Our scripts download multiple different JVMs for testing purposes. Set up we, we generate subclasses. We generate subclasses that we compile against, but don't include in the jar. And then to build the jar, we have to rename a bunch of files. So it is very complicated. And we have good reason to use a very scriptable build system. And our build is really complicated. So if somebody says, and but you know, people notice, people think that is something old that's easy to fix. So they, they, they mention, hey, would you like us to help you out and change your build system? It'd be a really bad idea because, hey, if the build breaks, everything stops. You can't develop anymore. You can't fix any bugs. You need to fix the build first. So that's a high maintenance burden. And our build is complicated for good reasons, or at least for reasons. Uh, and you need a lot of context in order to understand why it works like it does. For example, nobody understands why we are still targeting 1.6, and that's because there are a couple of old Eclipse 1. versions. 1.4 even. 1.4 even, I think, yeah. for some classes, and that's because yes. there are older versions of Eclipse that actually can run on those JVMs, and you know we want to stay compatible with it. As an example, that's not really documented anywhere. We could try that, but it's really hard to just think of the stuff and document it. So that's a bad idea. Um, another trick we do is, and this is hard because these also tend to be like the good, the good ones tend to be easier to do, right? You don't need a lot of context and it's an easy maintenance burden. Those tend to be easier features, but resist, right? Put a tag on it, help wanted or, or some, something so similar, good saying, first one. You're saying when we have the opportunity to, to deliver value very quickly because it's a very easy issue. Yeah, still try, not doing it. try to stick a help wanted note on it and try okay. to and, and and not if, do it yourself. Yeah, and especially if there are a couple of people offer to help, give them an email and say, hey, here's an issue. That might be a good one for you to pick up. So, you know, try to do that. It's hard, but we're trying at least. So, so first, I need to do maintenance backlog, give feedback to issues, and then you don't want me to program and deliver value. <laughs> that, yep, well, that's uh, the tribulations of running in a uh, big open source project. Uh, okay. So the lesson is to get help from others while preventing legal issues, manage your contributors. That's a sound lesson. Speaking of contributors, let's talk about finance. Yeah, let's, let's look, right? What, what do we see? I see lots of gold, very rich. This is all about the money. Oh, no, no, no. I was more thinking about uh, the appreciation and affection that it speaks. Uh, you, you think it's about the love. It's about the love. Right. Yes. So even for the smallest project, there's going to be some costs involved. Uh, we talked about uh, the, 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 our hosting our website. So we, we have a server running somewhere. We have a domain registration. And then we have over a million visitors. So, so that's bandwidth that needs to be paid for. We created the stickers. Uh, these costumes, uh, we go to conferences to talk about uh, Lombok or other stuff. Uh, there's costs. Yep. And for the first nine years, we were like, eh, it's a hobby. Uh, and, and, and we also were, were pretty lucky, uh, uh, for instance, going to the conferences. Um, one of the things that, that, uh, that I like is that, that my employer, he pays for my travels and the hotel. Uh, and even for the suits, because he has a logo on it. So that's like an easy deal, right? Well, so does my employer, but then I'm my own boss. So ah. it's still coming out of my pocket. Okay. So, 
one way to go to 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 yeah, well, have your costs paid is to find a corporate corporate sponsor. And in yeah, this but case, it's easy, right? Because it was your boss. You it was my where, boss. You knew yeah. where his office was. Right? Yes, I could just walk up and ask him, "Hey, will you pay for it?" And he said, "Yes." So that's fine. Um. So over the last ten years, we have been spending nearly every Tuesday working on Project Lombok, and and the first nine years we had to pay for this stuff, but now still. We we like we pay for it in time, and I don't need I don't need to be I don't really want to have a salary. Because that let's let's think yeah. about it for a second, right? We have yeah. ten years yes. of basically virtually every Tuesday evening. Yeah, and yeah, there are some vacations, but sometimes we do an extra day. Yeah, so that's two developers. Ten years every yeah. week. That's that is a heck of a lot of development yeah. hours. Yeah, but it is a hobby, so that's, that's cool. True. Uh, but 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 when we started, uh, there was just the two of us. Uh, we were uh, 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 sh sharing a house. We're a student house, so life was easy. We could go, uh, we could uh, go and program whenever we wanted. We, we could go to bed whenever we wanted. But now situations have changed. We have now wives and and, and girlfriends, and and my, my wife she, she says, so why do you have to 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 go out every Tuesday, not spend time with me? Uh, she has an a, a evening job, so we have little evenings together. And now I'm st still stealing away one more evening. Uh, uh, you're spending t uh, money on it. Uh, I know it's a hobby, but uh, so what I would like to see is that every now and then I can just take her out to have dinner courtesy of Project Lombok. That seems reasonable. That seems reasonable. But so far, uh, uh, well, initially we didn't have any income at all apart from the sponsoring of uh, these suits. Uh, but so I think like uh, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. we added a donate button we had a, we have a, a patreon account so uh, we have uh, we have some patrons so those are individuals that, yep. that sponsor is i think last i checked we got about a bit over a hundred dollars a month yes which so, is nice and it pays for things not quite a salary yeah it's um, a good start uh, and then uh, uh, uh three years ago we were presenting at java land that's a german java conference and we were approached by some uh developers who said uh, my boss doesn't like you like us to use Lombok. What? Yeah. Why? Because it was free. I don't follow. No, so his boss said, uh, first of all, I don't feel comfortable with that, that I'm oh, using that's something news. that's giving us a great value. And the second is they said, I want to want to make sure, or not necessarily make sure, but I want to make it very easy for them to stick around to keep maintaining the product. So I want to I, I want to have a I want to buy a license. So I wish we everybody felt like this. It's we great. introduced licenses, professional licenses and, and enterprise licenses. And wow. we say it's like uh, two and a half euro per developer per month. Right. And then the enterprise license is... is I think it's five or ten or something and, like that. And I what's don't... the difference between the two? Oh, what you get. So it's still open source project, right? So what, what do you get? Well, we will mention you on our website uh, and, uh, and you, you can have a, like a link and a logo. And the difference between the enterprise license and uh, professional license is with the enterprise license you can upload a golden version of your logo ah of course yes but hey we're now catering to the enterprise so i bet bucks are yeah. rolling in right yeah we have uh six we sold six licenses six yeah six one per to month? An one to an individual or total in total six oh, yeah geez. and the biggest is 12 developers the biggest is 12 yes. so, so no like google or yeah. other gigantic and, company and on this, huh? mm. project lombok is one of the biggest open source java libraries out there so maybe we're not good at asking for donations but i don't know uh uh, uh it, it, the, just the donations don't cover the costs so my lesson is to make sure that you can keep maintaining your project don't depend on donations. So what then? Yeah, well, you have to do it out of love, uh, uh, find a corporate sponsor, uh, adopt a freemium model where you sell consultancy or something, but having a donate button isn't enough. Ah, I see. Hmm. I think I have an idea. Well, let's do a thought exercise. Yes. You work at Topdesk. I've yes. got like what, 100 developers. Yeah, roughly. Uh, Primary project is a software software product. Yes. Right. Okay. Take all your open source dependencies that Topdesk relies on. Okay. Throw them in a bucket. Yep. Add all the dependencies those projects rely on. 
the, the transitive dependencies. Yeah. And the transitive to like everything. All the way down. Yeah. And I bet you guys use something like Jenkins, like CI yep. tools, right? Yes. Throw those in as well. Okay. Eclipse. Yeah. Throw it in. All the and all the transitive dependencies of those projects. Throw them in. Okay. okay. Right? There's a big yep. pile of open source projects. Yep. How many? More than 500. More than 500. Yes, at least. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what would happen if one of those projects just says, sort of posts, hey, guys, we're not maintaining it anymore. You know, tough cookies, go find something else. What would that, happen? That would be bad. That would be bad. So surely Topdesk has a license for all of these 500 projects. Surely. Well, we looked into this. Um, we found another solution, but it's unrelated to this. The problem is, if you have 500 open source dependencies, if you do the math, that would mean that for for every year of those, you need to figure out, do they do they accept donations? Uh, how do they want to get money? Is it PayPal, direct bank transfer, any other means? Uh, and then uh, given the money. Yeah, and then uh, if you do this yearly, then you need to renew, re renew twice it. a day. Right, with 500 projects. It's on average tw twice a day, yeah. so it's a so full-time job. Feasible. Yeah. So you can pick a few projects, but you can never pick them all. So how yeah. does Top Desk solve the problem of depending on over 500 projects? Well, we, we, we created a short list, and we looked at the projects where we could make a difference. And what about the rest? Sorry? And what about the other ones? Yeah, well, um, you mean like if, if they stop, are we in deep shit? Yeah. Well, in to at Top Desk, we have a saying, mm. we don't believe in miracles. We rely on them. Hmm. I just want to very quickly mention a company that's trying to solve this problem. Uh, I'm not sure it's for you, but uh, I would like to show. Oh, that's the, the KISS by Gustav Klimt, we forgot to mention. Um, there's a company called Tightlift. Uh, what they're trying to do is solve this problem, and um, we don't have much time, so I'll, I'll fly through it. Um, what they do is they say, OK, what, what if Topless were to pay, and they charge about one developer per 100 developers salary. If you they, they charge, you pay it to them. They run some software on your servers to check which software and which open source dependencies you rely on. They will help you out and tell you about security issues like Equifax wouldn't have happened with, with this. Um, and then they know which open source projects you rely on and they will contact them and send the money to them. So you have like a middle person that tries to sort out and solve this problem of, hey, I can't find every individual okay, thing so, of 500 so projects. I get right? that that solves the problem for the companies. Yes, and what does it do for us? All we really have to do is we have to say, uh, we will continue to maintain it. We have to notify them when we stop maintaining it. So that would have stopped event stream, another big security issue would have stopped that from happening. Um, and we also need to send them, or they would like us to send them security updates as well. And that, that's really all that So we they have had three, three conditions. So, so first of all, they said, keep doing whatever you were doing. Uh, we were not selling premium support. Uh, but we had to say that we would not sue their, their uh, subscribers. Well, mm -hmm. we have an MIT license, so mm -hmm. that was easy for us. There's no reason for us to sue any company ever. Mm -hmm. The second was that we needed to inform them of vulnerabilities, security yeah. vulnerabilities. And third, we needed to tell them in advance if we plan to stop maintaining this project. Yes, and all in order okay. to pay the maintainers. Good. But if you get a license, you still get stickers. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, we are celebrating. So we, we brought you some stickers. Uh, you can, after uh, after this presentation, you can up to, uh, come up to us. And, we'll and there will some. be some colleagues of mine We'll over give you there. some official licenses. Yes, official top of li uh, 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 Lombok licenses. So let's, uh, let's review. Yes. To make sure you have the time to add value, clean your backlog. And to make it easy for your users to give early feedback, release snapshots. To prevent instabilities or a maintenance burden, add features carefully. And to have a stable base, but with room for innovation, mark your new features as experimental. To prevent nasty surprises, prepare for success. And to get help from others while preventing legal issues, manage your contributors. To make sure you can keep maintaining your product, don't depend on donations. Hmm. I think we kind of made a painting as well, Rul. Yeah, did we? I think so. A piece of art. A piece of art. It's a piece of art. Okay. Took 10 years. Clean, Clean your, your backlog and, and release snapshots. snapshots. Add, Add features carefully and, and mark them as experimental. experimental. Prepare, Prepare for success, success, manage your contributors, contributors and don't depend on donations. donations. 
Thank you. Thank you. you.